Hey guys, hope everybody's doing well. We are back down in the growing room. It's been uh, a few weeks since I posted a video. I had to actually uh, go back and watch the uh, the previous one to remember where we had uh, left off with everything. It was, uh, it's been a bit of a interesting couple of weeks here. Last, that would be two weekends ago, so a week after that last video was posted, uh, nothing really was uh, was going on. The uh, the peppers were were doing well. All the plants were doing well. Nothing really needed to be done. So we uh, you know just carried on uh, fertilizing and watering all the plants down here. As I've said in previous videos, we uh, we use a mi really mild uh, liquid uh, fertilizer once a week on uh, on the plants down here. Usually, I think they're like kelp based. Very. Uh, uh, nothing too strong when they're uh, when they're still in the pots, and then the week after that we had a uh, a really intense rain slash lightning uh, storm here, which is kind of uncharacteristic with uh, with us and the melting snow. Adding a, a big rainstorm uh, caused a uh, a bit of a problem for uh, uh, for our local area. So we knew uh, people who had their basement got uh, a little bit of water in it. And unfortunately for us, we lost our well pump. Um, and so this all happened on Friday. And then, so Saturday, we woke up to no water in the house, no running water in the house. And then friends of ours uh, had water in the basement. So we contacted our, our pump guy. And, you know, he was, he was busy. So Saturday, we were helping, uh, helping out take carpet out of a basement. And then Sunday rolled around. And I just figured that, you know, our, our friend who, uh, who owns a pump business is probably not going to get around to our job for a while. So we spent Sunday uh, changing a well pump, which was, uh, well, that was interesting. I've never done that before, but uh, apparently now I'm, uh, I'm an expert. So, but that's all done. Uh, today, we are going to be transplanting our pepper plants. And then, since it's the beginning of May, we have to get everything else planted. So, all the zucchini and butternut squash and melons and cucumbers, all that has to get uh, get started. Give them a good, you know, one month head start. And the plan is to put everything else, uh, uh, well, put everything outside uh, beginning of June, June first, first week of June. Um, Again, pushing it back. We used to do it in the May long weekend, but for the last two years, we've had a really, really hard frost that pretty much wiped out our tomato plants last year and did a lot of damage to our pepper plants. So we're avoiding all that and just uh, and putting them out a lot later. Now, because we are, we're gonna have a lot of plants down here this year, a lot more than previous years. We, I am going to set up another grow light in uh in one of our uh one of our unused shelves so pick this one up upside down locally so we'll talk a bit about uh the lights that i have and uh and go through uh mounting this new one but i'm actually going to do this first so let's get uh we're going to get this one all set up and get the uh the shelf all wrapped in uh in reflective foil and then we'll talk a little bit about the grow setup and then we will uh, do some transplanting and maybe get some seeds started. Uh, it's going to be a lot of work down here. Probably be down here for a couple hours. So uh, yeah, let's get this project going. Okay, so mounting is going to be a little tricky because it's kind of a honeycomb, but I'm just going to take the template and find a spot to screw into more or less. Well, that actually looks surprisingly good. Uh, let's see here.
All right, we have another shelf set up. Put the reflective material on the outside, and there it is, the one two foot 60 watt grow light. All right, got that grow light all mounted. That one was pretty straightforward. I had a template to uh, to put the uh, the mounting screws in and everything, so not uh, not that bad at all. We'll uh, do a quick little uh, rundown of the different grow lights that I have in uh, in this room. I started off with uh, actually built my own grow light with the uh, leftover materials from building the house. It's just some. Uh, some light sockets attached to a, uh, a piece of plywood. It works pretty well. It's mounted in the uh, on the shelf that has the highest uh, highest room for the plants to grow. So what normally happens is uh, as the plants grow down here, when they start touching the uh, the tops of the uh, the shorter shelves, I usually just move them down uh, under here to uh, to finish off their indoor growing. Typically, it's the tomatoes. Tomatoes get really, uh, really tall. Um, I, I haven't really uh, found a solution to uh, to their legginess. It, uh, it's just kind of the way they, they grow down here. Uh, but I would not recommend anybody build anything like this. There are way simpler solutions available nowadays. Uh, it's just too much messing about with, uh, with a bunch of hardware. It's just not necessary. And it's not waterproof, so yeah, there's uh, lots of downsides, not uh, not too many upsides. The majority of the shelves down here have four of these LED panels. These are blue and red LED panels, kind of the cheapest panels that I could find on Amazon. My shelves are about four square feet, so you know, four of these up at the top uh, worked out uh, quite well. I've had them for, I think the oldest ones I've had down here are about four years old now, so they seem to be pretty resilient. Uh, these are the first generation ones that I've ordered. They used to be multiple pieces, right? So there's a, a backing on them, screwed in, and then plastic fronts with the small LEDs. The, the more recent ones I order are single piece uh, plastic, um, same kind of layout, LED layout. I'm not sure what the current price is. I think I paid about $40, 40 US dollars for two of them, and they've probably gone up um, since then. Again, the ones that I have are have been quite uh, quite reliable. However, Amazon has a, a tendency of changing suppliers or you know suppliers coming on and, and uh, different ones going away so they go through revisions without really telling you about it uh, the other thing is you know you get the boxes and they are just plain boxes they're I don't know if they're even certified for use in Canada or the US are they UL certified or who knows right you're just kind of ordering them from uh, from Amazon and and you get what you get. I've been lucky. Uh, the, the ones that I have seem to be quite reliable. They're working. They've been working for, for quite a while, but who knows? You know, you order them nowadays, four years after I got them. I don't know what you're gonna get. And uh, yeah, that uh, that's just kind of the way it works. Now up here in Canada, there's been a few changes in indoor gardening over the last couple years. We passed legislation which, uh, let's just say, enabled a lot of indoor gardening for a very specific plant. <laughs> because of that legislation that's changed, the indoor growing market in Canada has just exploded in terms of, I mean, now we can get anything from you know, grow lights that just, you know, go into uh, light bulb sockets to full blast commercial growing setups anywhere from like the industrial size ones you can order them from uh, from a website uh, and it's all um, the market has really opened up in Canada again targeted for a very specific plant however 
works for everything. Uh, we can uh, all gardeners can uh, can enjoy the benefits. You can spend as little as you know ten dollars for a little bulb that uh, that goes into a socket, up to thousands of dollars for full blast commercial grade grow lights and grow racks. Um, so yeah. A side, a benefit of that is these grow lights are now available at Home Depot. I picked this one up at uh, at Home Depot. A little bit more expensive than the uh, than the panels. Uh, however, a lot better quality. First off, it's it's certified <laughs> for use in Canada, so it's probably uh, a lot safer than the uh, than the grow panels. It is a lot brighter. There's a significant difference in the uh, the light output from uh, from these LEDs. So I have one of these two foot uh, grow lights that's uh, lighting up a, about a four square foot area under uh, uh, in our uh, in that shelf. I can tell you that just by looking visually looking at it, the this two foot grow light is a lot brighter than the four panels. Um, from before, it does cost a bit more, but you know the the LEDs are a lot bigger. Hopefully, they're a lot better quality, and uh, yeah, we'll see uh, we'll see how it performs. All right, so first things first is to get our pepper plants transplanted. They're looking ooh, they're looking okay. They could use a bit of fertilizer, a bit of water. Get them out of these pots into something a little bit larger. We're gonna reorganize our uh, our growing uh, growing arrangement here. Get some uh, some plants under the new lights and just rearrange uh, what we have under the existing lights. So there's uh, there's quite a bit of work. So let's get started. All right. So starting on this side with these jalapeno plants. Some of them are, well, they're looking a little, look like they need to be transplanted. Let's put it that way. So. Uh, and bury them a little bit deeper because they do have, they're a little bit leggy. Not too bad though. And then they're going in the laundry sink and getting a good soaking. Well, good morning, and we are back for day two of this video. I told you there was a lot of work to do. Um, we finished up pretty late last night. We ended up uh, potting up all the pepper plants, so they're set. They should stay in those pots until they're ready to go out uh, into the garden. We also started uh, planting 
well, basically everything else. It is it's May 1st today. And so that means in a month, all the plants down here are going out into the garden. Um, as it stands, it doesn't look like that's what's gonna happen. We'll, uh, well, let's go take a look outside and I'll show you what I mean. And this is what the garden looks like May 1st. We still have well over two feet of snow in most spots of the garden and we lost a lot of snow last night we had quite a good rainstorm uh, so it was e it looked even worse yesterday so whether or not that June 1st timeline is uh, is reasonable uh, we'll find out but this is the first time I've ever seen snow on the ground in the month of May okay so to finish off this weekend's work in the planting room Basically, we just have to make sure that all the seeds that are going out beginning of June are planted now. I want to give everything, a, like I said before, a really good head start. We did quite a few last night. I think the only thing that's left is to start off some lettuce. We really were short of lettuce almost all the time last year, so I'm going to get you know, a full tray, 72 cell pack of lettuce in the ground. I'm gonna try some succession planting. In previous years, it's always kind of been difficult to uh, to time everything, especially since our, our growing seasons are so short. Um, a lot of the times for us, it's just better to, we plant a variety of lettuce and usually they're, they're ready to be harvested at different times anyway. So uh, a lot of the times in the past, we just, put everything in all at once and then picked it as it was uh, is it, as it was ready. This year I'll uh, because we're gonna do a few trays we'll do some succession planting and what else do we need to do? Some of the melons we have to start off we did the squash and zucchini last night and we'll go every, over everything everything that we've done everything that we've potted up uh, after we are all finished. So. Yeah, just a little bit of work today, so we'll get her done. Right, guys as you can see the lights are on which means it is late at night again the kids are finally sleeping didn't get everything planted that uh, that I wanted to over these last two days but uh, you know we'll get the seeds in the uh, in the pots sometime this week so we'll take a quick look I, uh, I did manage to rearrange all the uh, the plants we'll take a quick look at how everything's doing it's been uh, it's been about three weeks so uh, a lot of the plants are are not recognizable from the uh, from the last video so take a look at the plants give uh, give you guys a rundown of what I have planted so far and uh, and then we will uh, we'll see you next week so let's take a look at everything and on our top shelf we have our jalapenos and red knights the uh, sweet snacks are the pepper plants that are going to go into the pots on the deck they produce smaller uh, bell peppers work really well in pots on the bottom rack more red nights I think we have about 60 pepper plants in total also did manage to transplant the habaneros some of them are, are a little small but I just wanted to get all the pepper transplanting done some flowers here First lettuces, we've planted a lot more than that, but just to get a couple, uh, a few plants starting early. Yeah, the habaneros again, small plants, but they really don't uh, don't take off as the other peppers do. They take a long time to get growing. We're also going to do these in uh, in pots on the deck. They really have never done well out in the uh, in the garden. 
really want to get a, a good crop of habanero peppers. And under our third set of lights, red onions doing very well. I discarded the tray of yellow onions. The germination was, was very poor and as you'll see shortly, space is going to become a premium under these lights so it's just not worth it to keep a big tray, uh, a 72 cell tray for, uh, yeah, for 10 onion plants. Just didn't make any sense. Our eggplants are, are coming up. Those are going to need to be potted up before they're put outside. I have nothing in these cells. Uh, probably going to start some lettuce sometime during the week. And a couple sunflowers, some other flowers. One, uh, what's that? That's an Ultra Girl tomato under these lights that didn't fit on the other tray, as you'll see shortly. And on the top rack, this is our broccoli, cauliflower, and cabbage, which are all doing well, and a couple sunflowers. That's our new grow light. As you can see, quite a bit brighter than than the four um, the four panel LEDs. A little bit different uh, different color, different wavelengths with. Uh, with that top, uh, that top LED, a lot more red to it. So we'll see. The plants seem to uh, seem to be doing very well under the uh, the single two foot uh, LED lights. It's really very very bright. Hard to uh, hard to look at. And then finally, the tomatoes. Hard to tell where the individual plants are, but the tomatoes all doing very very well. And again, we put them under here just because they, uh, if we put them under the other ones, they, uh, they're too tall to, uh, to fit under the lights. So they are, I mean, my tomatoes always do come out a bit leggy, a bit tall. I just noticed one the other day, this one has some flowers already starting. I am just hoping that these will, uh, won't get so tall that we can't keep them under here. The one in the back, the back's getting a little, uh, a little out of control. But you know, we still have a month to go, so hopefully they don't, uh, hopefully they they don't get much taller and they put on more, uh, more width in the uh, in the stalks. But we'll see what happens. We may have to next year push back the. Uh, the planting of the tomato plants another uh, another week or two just so they don't get too tall under the lights inside and as for what we planted the last two days 15 spaghetti squash 19 mashed potato squash and the rest of this tray is butternut squash again we are working on hopefully having a new piece of, uh, of garden area ready on our property in time to have these uh, in the ground back there. If we don't use them all, then the plants will be given away to neighbors and, uh, and anybody who, who wants to use them. But the worst thing is having ground that, uh, that is ready, um, but no plants to, uh, to put them in. So we're trying to make sure that we have plenty of plants uh, for this year. Swiss char, kale, and chamomile, something new that, uh, that we're trying this year. Um, again, last year we just did not have enough. The Swiss char, I think we had nine Swiss char plants and nine kale plants, and we were nowhere near keeping up with, uh, with those, so planted quite a few more of those. And over on this tray, we have sugar baby watermelons. I plant two seeds in each one of these larger pots, and then if they survive, if they grow well inside, plant the whole thing outside. It's not too much of a problem if you have two vining plants close together. You just direct the, uh, the shoots in opposite directions. Sugar Rush is a cantaloupe. Lots of those. A couple pumpkins planted. Uh, there are payload, which are zucchinis, patty pans, and mouse melons, which are cucumelons. Uh, those were really good. Kids really like those. I like them. They're really, uh, 
really good tasting so do a whole bunch of those this year as well and again once these start uh, breaking the surface they are going under the lights so it's going to take a little bit of creative organizing to get uh, to get all these under the lights but we will uh, we'll make it work and then lastly still in the sink just waiting for everything to drain off before we uh, put them on top of the racks are our cucumbers so we have nine cobras and seven uh, what are they? Zapatas, which are the pickling cucumbers. Alright guys, that's it. Lots of seeds have been started in the last couple days. Only thing left for us to do is start off and stagger the planting of our lettuces. We're going to do a couple trays and hopefully not run out of lettuce like we did last year. Other than that, all these seeds should be sprouted in the next week, so Again, we're going to do quite a bit more rearranging to try and get everything under these grow lights. Hopefully this week the weather breaks. It's been cold and miserable up here, but they are predicting sunshine and double digit temperatures after Wednesday. So hopefully it'll finally feel like spring is here. And who knows, maybe by you know the third week of May we can actually get out onto the garden and start uh, start turning over the beds maybe even plant some seeds but I'm not going to uh, to rush anything uh, last year's frost experience was really uh, was really disheartening so we're gonna avoid that as uh, as much as possible this year so that's it for now and I'll see you next week